Hey guys, it's Brie here from Blossom and Branch Farm and if you've been wanting to grow beautiful dahlias, this is the video for you. We're going to go over a lot of the basics to growing great dahlias, from where to source them, where to plant them, how to plant them, and other growing information. What we're not going to be talking about today is a couple things. One is taking cuttings, that is a whole video of its own, and the other one is going to be dividing and storage. We're not going to be talking much about that, but we are going to be giving you a little trick if you're intimidated by storage and dividing. Let's go. So here at the farm, I started growing dahlias my first year of flower farming. I knew that they were going to be one of my favorite flowers because they are so showy and gorgeous. And they are. What they are not, don't be misled. What dahlias are not great at being is a cut flower. I know this may seem crazy because we are a cut flower farm, so we sell cut flowers. If those flowers don't make good cut flowers, why do you sell them? Well, they're good for a couple of things. They're good for events, so weddings, centerpieces, for the dinner table, dinner parties, bridal bouquets, they're great for that. What they're not great for is lasting in a vase for a long time. So while we do sell them in retail bouquets because people do love them, they just don't last that long. So just bear that in mind, they're not meant for vase life, okay? So they're beautiful, they're gorgeous, they're great in the garden, they are pretty on the table, but they're not gonna last that long. Disclaimer. I wanna talk about the anatomy of a dahlia. So the tuber itself is the part that looks like a big potato. They can come in lots of different shapes. They can be small and narrow. They can be very large. They might have two pieces on them. Lots of different shapes, all are acceptable. My only guideline is that I like to have a tuber that is bigger than a AAA battery, which can be pretty small. So we have our main tuber body. Then we have what's called the neck. The neck is the part that connects the main tuber or energy source to the spot where the sprout is going to come from. We call that the eye. And usually you have a swelling here at the top of the neck, and then there's a little spot called the eye. And usually you have at least one eye. You may have two, but they're usually going to be up here. They're not gonna be down here on the neck itself. What we wanna make sure of is that this neck is intact. So if your neck looks like this and it's not one strong piece, that means that your neck is no longer intact and it's not able to pull energy from the tuber and send it up to the eye. So when we're evaluating our tubers, we wanna make sure that the necks are not broken. Now, when we buy a clump of tubers, you're going to have lots of tubers all connected to one main crown. There is definitely a chance that one or more of these necks here will be broken. As long as there is one neck on that clump that is intact, it will be fine. And if you have broken necks, you can just go ahead and cut them off and remove them. Not a big deal to do that. All right, let's start at the beginning. Where should you get your dahlias? You can grow them in a few different ways. One is from seed, one is from tuber, and one is from a clump of tubers all together. You can usually also buy them in pots at the garden center already started for you. That works fine too. I just like to see my tubers personally before I plant them. The most affordable way to grow dahlias is always going to be from seed because seeds are the most inexpensive. But you should know that if you're going to be growing from seed, they may not look the same as their parent plant. So you may buy seeds that are from the apple blossom dahlia, for example, but that doesn't mean that the plants that are going to come from those seeds are going to look like the apple blossom dahlia. They may share some characteristics of that dahlia, such as the same flower petal color or maybe the same shape, but in general, they're not gonna be the same. And often we find that the ones grown from seed have some undesirable characteristics. So for example, they tend to be more open face. In the cut flower world, an open face dahlia tends to not have as good of a base life as a tighter dahlia. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but the bees do love open face dahlias, so don't totally discount them. Sometimes they also have undesirable characteristics when it comes to the form of the dahlia. Maybe the flower of the dahlia faces downward, which can make it really hard to use in a vase or in a bouquet, or maybe it has weak stems. You just aren't sure what you're going to get when you're doing from seed. If you're doing dahlias from seed, you're gonna start them about eight to 10 weeks before last frost, transplant them into the garden, and at the end of the season, they will make a tuber that you can dig up and save. So the fun thing about growing from seeds is because you never know what you're gonna get, you might come up with a really cool, unique dahlia tuber that nobody else has. You can store that and divide it for seasons to come. My favorite method of growing is using a single tuber versus a clump of tubers. Now, if you buy from the big box stores like Costco, Home Depot, Lowe's, any of those, and you get a bag of dahlias, Usually they're going to be clumps. This is because they're grown in the Netherlands for the most part. They are dug up with basically a big potato machine. It just digs the whole thing up, shakes it off, and it doesn't make sense for those retailers to take the time to divide them. It just costs too much money. So instead, they just ship the whole clump. And you might be thinking, a clump is better because there's more tubers on it. 
Yes and no. One of the pros to planting clumps is that you have a better chance of it sprouting. If there's a broken neck on any of those tubers, there's still a chance that one of the tubers is going to still sprout even if there's another one on that clump that is broken. The other benefit of growing in clumps is that sometimes you'll get a clump that has more than one viable tuber with one viable eye, and that means you can divide it and you can actually get two tubers. So that's the benefit of growing in the clumps. However, we found that the ones from the big box stores, and this is kind of true in the Dahlia community, buying these ones from the big box stores or the imports have a higher rate of leafy gall, which is a disease that infects dahlias it will spread to your soil and it can spread to neighboring dahlias as well. Leafy gall shows up as kind of this cauliflower looking sprout on the top of the tuber. Instead of just one or two or three healthy eyes, you see a proliferation of growth. It is not normal, it's not healthy, it's a disease and that disease can spread in your soil and it can infect other plants. And then you'll probably not wanna plant dahlias there for the next year or two. But if you find one that has leafy gall, you need to discard it. And again, these imported ones from big box stores just tend to have higher rates. Now that doesn't mean that if you have dahlias from a big box store that they're not going to work. I would just recommend maybe growing them in a container or waking them up before you plant them to see if they are sprouting with signs of leafy gall. We're gonna talk about how to do that in this class. So the other way that we mentioned is just single tubers. And this is my preferred way of doing it. And I like to grow single tubers because they're easier to plant. Now, the interesting thing about growing from either a seed, a single tuber or a clump of tuber is that you will end up with the same product at the end of the year. Whether you grow from a tiny seed or a big clump, you will have a clump of tubers at the end of the year. The different varieties will create different numbers of clumps, different sizes of clumps, but you will end up with a tuber or a clump at the end of the year for each of those three. And the other interesting thing is it doesn't really matter which one you start with, you'll usually get blooms right around the same time. Whether you start with a seed or a big clump, they will all usually bloom right around the same time. My favorite source for those single tubers are usually local flower farmers. Now the other thing you'll want to be mindful of when you are sourcing clumps or tubers versus seeds is asking your retailer what they have been treated with. And this is where buying from a big box store can get difficult because you can't really ask them. They probably are not going to know if those tubers have been treated with anything. So for example, there are some large Dahlia retailers even here in the US that are very well respected that treat their tubers with Neonics. And they actually have videos about that here on YouTube telling about their spray and pesticide recommendations for their Dahlias. And let me tell you, it is a very heavy spray regimen and uses neonics. Now neonics, neonics, whatever you wanna call it, neonicotinoids, they are a type of pesticide that is incredibly aggressive. It actually stays in the tissue of the plant for up to several years. So when we're looking at a tuber that has been saved from a parent plant that has been sprayed with neonics, uh, it's probably still going to contain them for the following year and they will kill most of the bees and pollinators that visit your plant. Um, I'm not gonna call anyone out here in public, but it's also easy to search. If you wanna search in the YouTube bar um, spraying dahlias, you'll probably find it. So anyway, if you can buy from a local farmer and find out exactly what they treat them with and how they grow them. Also make sure that they're not reselling clumps from the Netherlands, that they are selling from their own divided dahlias. All right, let's talk about where to plant your dahlias. Dahlias are great because you can grow them in a container. You could have a whole gorgeous container garden full of dahlias and you can also grow them in the ground. So either one will work. There are certain things to bear in mind. If you are going to do dahlias in containers or pots, you should keep it to one per container and use at least a five gallon pot because they do make big tubers at the end of the year. The great thing about growing in a container is that if you're intimidated by digging up and storing, you can just move the whole pot into a sheltered place that does not get below freezing in the wintertime and then just bring it back out in the spring. You don't have to worry about digging them up. Of course, if you're growing in a pot or a container, you are more limited on how many you can plant. So if you want to plant a lot of them, plant in the ground. Now, if you're planting in the ground, you'll want to be mindful of your soil type. Sandier soils tend to be better for dahlias. They are native to Mexico. They prefer a sandier, well-draining soil. But we're here in Colorado. We have a very heavy clay, like probably a lot of you have and they do just fine. The tip I'm going to give you is don't bury them too deeply. Okay, I'm gonna illustrate this for you because I think it'll be easier to see what I'm talking about. Now, if you are growing in a heavier soil, let's say that this is the surface of your soil right here, you are going to wanna to plant your tuber about two inches down from the surface of that soil. You don't wanna plant it too deeply. I've seen videos where people plant them a foot deep, way too deep, especially if you're in clay soil. 
two inches deep is where we're gonna wanna plant our tuber. And if you're planting a single tuber like we prefer to do, you're gonna plant it on its side, okay? So what we don't wanna do when we get our little tuber is to plant it this way. Do not plant your tuber this way. That is just going to result in a rotten tuber because this bottom half is going to stay wet, especially if you have heavy soil. What you actually are going to want to do is plant it sideways. And we're going to plant our tuber facing, here's our neck and our eye. I'm sorry, I'm not a good drawer. So you're going to want to plant it sideways like this about, again, two inches below your soil level. Don't do it this way. Do it this way. Got it? Now, if you're planting a clump versus a single tuber, you're going to want to plant it so that the crown is pointing up, the tubers are facing down. So you'll see where the stem was coming out of that clump of tubers from the previous year, and you'll want to plant that part pointing up. If you're planting just a single tuber like this one, it doesn't matter if you plant it with the eye facing up or not, it will figure it out. Now, what type of a growing environment do the dahlias prefer? They really like to be in full sun, but in warmer climates, they can also handle a little bit of dappled afternoon shade. I don't like to give recommendations for what to add to your soil because it all depends on your individual soil. I'm not going to tell you to go out and add a bunch of compost to your soil to make it better or sand or whatever because it is different for everyone. If people recommend things like bloom fertilizers or what have you. I don't like to do any of that because quite honestly, all bloom fertilizers have different NPK numbers. So to say this is the one that's gonna work for you is a lie. Everyone's soil, again, is different. Get a soils test. It's probably highly likely that you don't have to add bloom fertilizer to your soil, and if you do, you could be running into phosphorus runoff, which leads to algae blooms, which leads to eutrophication. Ugh, it's a whole can of worms. You probably don't need bloom fertilizer, so don't waste your money. If you're not sure, get a soils test. That's gonna be your best way to know what your soil needs. Don't go adding or amending even with compost willy-nilly because too much compost can lead to too much nitrogen and too much phosphorus, which can be bad for the environment and also be bad for your dahlia. So if you amend your soil with something that has too much nitrogen, you're going to end up with a big, beautiful, bushy dahlia full of leaves and no flowers. So if you want a dahlia bush and no dahlia flowers, amend with lots of nitrogen. Otherwise, Hold back on the nitrogen. Dahlias don't like too much of that or else they're gonna get big and bushy. Now, one thing that I really want to get into your head when you're thinking about dahlias is rot. Always be thinking about rot with dahlias because they love to rot. They're like ranunculus, you look at them wrong and they rot. So what you wanna be careful of when we're in this planting phase is that you're not over watering your dahlias. Once those dahlias have established some roots, it's a little bit safer to water them more regularly. But when we first plant them, if your soil is very dry, you can give them one water at planting time and that's it. Then don't water them again until you see the sprout and the first set of leaves. If your soil is already fairly moist, you actually don't even need to water your tubers in. They already contain enough moisture within that tuber to get them sprouted and started up and out of the ground. So you really don't need to water them. Now the exception is if you're planting from seed and those seeds haven't established a tuber yet, those seedlings might need more water than a tuber. So we're talking about planting a tuber or a clump, moist soil, don't water until you see them come up and out of the ground. And in fact, I'm gonna take it a step further. If you've planted your tubers into the ground and you get a lot of rain, I would encourage you to tarp your dahlia planting areas so that they don't get soggy and rotten. Tarp it so that you can keep that soil moisture under control. We've done that a couple times here at the farm where we get spring rains and they haven't popped up and out of the soil yet and I'm worried about them rotting, so we just put a tarp over the entire area to keep them protected. And once they've come up and out of the soil, they have a sprout, they have their set of leaves, then you can start to water them around two inches of water a week. You wanna keep the soil moist, but not waterlogged or heavy, because again, no one wants a rotten dahlia. When do we plant our dahlias? Always plant right around your last frost. Now, if you look at your last frost date and you know that your 10 day forecast says you're gonna have great weather, then I would be fine to say, go ahead and plant them because by the time they sprout and come up and out of the soil, usually it's at least a week or two. So plant them around your last frost, but make sure that you're not planting them too early because they are not frost tolerant. If they get with frost, they will die. If you have to plant them early or you're planting them and you've pre-sprouted them in pots and you're worried about a frost, make sure you have frost fabric on hand to cover them with in case of an emergency. The other thing to think about when you're planting is support and staking. So if you're looking for dahlias for cutting in a cutting garden, I'm going to recommend you look for a taller variety so that you get the long stems. 
something that at least is going to be three foot tall or taller. If you're looking to put them in your raised bed, you're not going to cut from them very much, or you want them to be part of your landscape, you may look for a shorter variety called bedding varieties. Now, if you are going to select taller plants, you're going to need to plan for support. So here at the farm, we put hoops and low tunnels over everything. That way we can swap out frost fabric or hail knitting. For those of you at home, that might be overkill. If you're just growing a few dahlias, you can stake each one individually. If you're growing more than five or six, you might just do some T-posts around the outside of your growing area and then install some horizontal netting. That horizontal netting is going to sit about a foot to 18 inches off the ground. And then you might even wanna do a second layer up high or you can corral them with some kind of rope to help keep them from toppling over because they do get top heavy. So especially if they're loaded with blooms and we get a rain, they will very often bend over and that can ruin your dahlia for the season. So I say think about this when you're planting because if you try to set a stake into the spot where you have your dahlia to support it after that tuber has already started to grow, you risk impaling your tuber and doing damage to it. So if you know you're going to be using stakes to support your dahlias, you'll want to go ahead and put that stake in the ground at the time when you're planting your dahlia tuber, bury them all together, and then that way you know you're not gonna stick your stake in through your dahlia tuber and damage it. So plan for support, plan for what you're going to do before you plant your tuber so that you know if you need to put a stake in the ground anywhere near a tuber. So let's assume that all has gone well up until this point and your dahlias have not rotted out. They've come up and out of the ground and they have a sprout and your first set of leaves. It is now time to pinch your dahlias. We pinch our dahlias because pinching encourages bushier plants and more flowers. If we don't pinch, what we tend to get is one main stalk, a beautiful flower, and then we cut it all the way down and the plant has to start all over. So instead, what we like to do is pinch them when they're very small. Some people will wait and pinch them when they're bigger. Personally, I prefer to pinch them as early as possible. So you'll want to pinch just below a growth node. And I like to pinch when I just have two sets of leaves. So I'll pinch right underneath that first set. That encourages that dahlia to branch out from lower down on the plant instead of higher up, which creates a more stable foundation for the dahlia. Spacing, if you're looking at planting multiple dahlias in one area, I recommend a one foot spacing. Some people will do a bigger spacing, but for cut flowers, we usually like to do a one foot. That also helps us if we're going to be using the corral method to hold them up together because I have all my dahlias together. I can just corral one rope around them if they're spaced at about a one foot spacing. Now, when we're looking at harvesting dahlias, the fun part, cutting them and bringing them inside, I do have a great tip for you. The interesting thing about dahlias is that the stems are hollow. So when you go to cut them, you'll be really interested to see that it's basically hollow all the way up. So what can happen is, if there's a long time between when you cut your dahlia and when you put it into water, that dahlia is going to have a really poor vase life. So what we like to do is we like to do a few things to help with the vase life of the dahlia. One is to cut it very early in the morning before the sun and the heat of the day hits it. It's going to be more hydrated at that point from the plant itself. It's going to maintain more moisture and it's going to have a better vase life. Don't cut them and carry them and hold them dry until you get inside. Bring a bucket of water with you. We actually have a little trick where we boil the ends of our cut dahlias. This helps open up the cells and it helps those dahlias uptake water. I know that it's anecdotal, but we have found that they get on average a day of additional vase life when we boil them. And that to me is worth it. So all we do is we boil some water and we pour it into a bucket just to about two inches of depth. We put our cut stem directly into that hot water and make sure that you're leaving your stems and make sure that you're leaving the heads of the flowers out and away from the steam. So in a bucket is a good place to do this because the heads can sit out and away from the steam. We don't wanna steam the flower heads themselves. And then we just let that water cool down. Put it in a dark, cool place during this process. And then once that water has cooled off, you can go ahead and arrange with them. It just helps hydrate them a little bit more deeply than normal. One tip when you're harvesting dahlias is to make sure that you're cutting them nice and long. So if you start cutting them too shallow, they're gonna branch from higher up, which is going to lead to a top-heavy plant that might risk toppling over. However, if we're cutting them nice and long, it's going to encourage branching down below, lower down on the plant, which will help keep them more sturdy and it's going to encourage more long stems. As a general guideline, I always say cut at least as long as your fingers to your elbow. Pests are common with dahlias and because dahlias are so prized for their petals, if they get struck by pests, we can get really annoyed. I understand. Some of the things that tend to attack 
Dahlias more commonly are earwigs, cucumber beetles, there's grasshoppers, there's tarnished plant bugs. Now, as you know, here in the farm, we do not believe in pesticides, even the organic ones like neem. So try not to interfere uh, if you start to see things being attacked. There are a couple of tricks. One is that if you know you have some prized dahlias, you're going to be cutting and bringing inside. Head off those pests early by sliding a mesh tool bag over the bloom, cinch it tight, and then those bugs can't get in there. Once you're ready to harvest, you just uncinch the bag at the base, pull it up off the top, and you're ready to cut and bring it inside, and there's no damage to the petals. The other thing that you can do is co-planting. So we actually like to do some underplanting with buckwheat. We found that once we have about two full leaves on our dahlias, we sprinkle some buckwheat seeds at the base of the dahlias then, and that buckwheat helps attract beneficial insects that will help us battle off some of those pests that tend to affect dahlias. So some of the beneficial insects that we are going to want to have around if we're growing dahlias include damsel bugs, minute pirate bugs, spiders, yellow jackets, big eyed bugs. So yellow jackets in particular, if you have a lot of earwigs, yellow jackets can be helpful with that. So remember, we wanna to try to let our garden achieve that homeostasis. We talk about this in our regenerative gardening class more deeply, but it can really help to do that little underplanting of buckwheat and also to incorporate native plants, beneficial native plants around the perimeter of your garden or even included in your landscape is a great thing to do to help bring in those beneficial insects that are going to help battle the pests. When we're looking at shapes of dahlias, this is where it gets really fun. Shapes, colors, there's so many different varieties. There are three different types. There is a water lily or anemone open-faced dahlia. We mentioned that those are the ones that the bees prefer because the pollen is very accessible. They also happen to have the shortest base life. So that means you can see more of the center of the flower and then the petals are on the outside, which can be really pretty for a bridal bouquet or for a dinner party, but not so great for vase life. Now the second type is the ball form dahlia. These come in different sizes and a ball form dahlia has lots of layers of petals tightly within one small area. Those ball-shaped dahlias tend to have the best vase life. So if you're looking for something with good vase life, go for the ball form dahlias. If you're looking for something very big and beautiful and showy, you're looking for the dinner plate dahlias. Dinner plate dahlias are those showstoppers, the cafe au lait, the florels, the labyrinths. They are very, very large, literally can be the size of a dinner plate, stunningly beautiful, but you trade off that beauty for vase life. The vase life of the dinner plates those cafe au laits, those bigger dahlias, just tends to be not so good. Bear that in mind when you're selecting what kind of tuber you buy. So just bear that in mind when you're trying to select your tubers for the year. Also know that if you're in an area that gets a lot of rainfall or if you get a lot of pest damage, you might wanna avoid the white blooms because they tend to show more of that damage than the colorful blooms. You can wake them up if you want to. Now, waking up and taking cuttings are two different things. When we're taking cuttings, you're putting the bottom half of the tuber into a pot, and as it sprouts, you're taking cuttings from those sprouts and rooting them into pots. It's not something I do myself, I just don't have the space for it and I find it's too finicky. I don't like to do it. So this video is not about that, but you can wake them up. So if you get tubers and you're not sure if they're viable or not, waking them up can be a good thing to do. All you have to do is get a 10-20 tray, or if you're doing clumps, you can put it in a pot, put some moist potting soil in there, and bury your tuber about two inches below the soil level. Make sure you cover the neck and the eye because otherwise those tubers are going to dry out. Once you have it covered, put it into a 70 degree or above room so that they can start to wake up. In a couple of weeks, you should see a sprout coming up out of the soil. And if you don't, you can dig it up and look for it and see if an eye has sprouted. If an eye has not sprouted, it's not a viable tuber. The other place that this can be helpful to wake up your tubers is if you are buying those imported tubers we talked about earlier. Waking them up can sometimes also wake up the disease that they might have called leafy gall. So this pre-sprouting waking up of dahlia tubers process can be helpful if you're not sure if you have a tuber that is infected with leafy gall or not. Just wake them up. You'll see once they start to sprout whether they look healthy or not. That leafy gall does not always show up during that pre-sprout process. Sometimes it won't show up until the end of the year when you go to dig them up, but it'll give you a shot at knowing whether they have it or not. And again, if you're not sure whether they have eyes or not, waking them up is a good way to find out. It's not something that I do myself because it takes up a lot of room. I just don't have room to wake up 800 dahlias. What I do do is I slowly increase 
the temperature that I'm storing them at. So typically when they're in their storage facility, I'm storing them at 45 degrees Fahrenheit. As it gets closer to planting time, I increase that temperature by about five degrees every two weeks. And then that way by planting time, they've sprouted an eye. I know which ones are viable and which ones are not. Okay, so now we come to the most intimidating part of growing dahlias, which is storing them for the winter. Now, if you are in zone eight or above, you really don't have to worry about this. You can store them in the ground. You don't have to dig them up every year. They will overwinter and they'll come back in the spring. Now, the exception to that is if you live in a wet area, because remember, dahlias love to rot. So if you have wet winters and you leave them in the ground, they may rot. So you might tarp the area if you're planning on leaving them in the ground. If you live in an area that gets frost, let them get frost killed. It actually helps your dahlias cure very similar to a potato. So this last year we actually did our storage very similar to how potato growers would cure their potatoes. We let the plants die back. So we let them get hit by a freeze or a frost. We waited about three weeks and then we started the digging process. That time of rest between when the plant dies and when we dug it up was that curing period. Now you can skip that curing period, but they're not going to store quite as well as if they get that curing time in the ground. We actually do have another video on our channel where we show how to cure the dahlias and that involves a period of humidity and dark for them. And that will help if you're not able to leave them in the ground for that curing process. But if you can, let them die back, let them get hit by a freeze or a frost before you dig. Now, traditionally, if you were in zone eight or below, it was recommended that you dig them up and store them for the winter. We did do an experiment this winter, Colorado. We get very cold and in fact, we had a couple weeks this year where we were negative 20 to negative 10 for a week consecutively. And guess what? We overwintered our dahlias. Now this is the one time when it's good to be in a drought prone area like Colorado, it was very dry in the fall last year. So our ground was pretty dry. So we cut those dahlias all the way down. We stacked about this much leaves on top. So almost a foot and a half or two feet of leaves, dry leaves. And then we applied a tarp over the top. Now it is mid end of March. Again, we've been through two weeks of negative 20, negative 10, negative eight degrees. And I dug up that area yesterday and the dahlias are still alive underneath all of that insulation. So that is a way to consider if you don't wanna to have to dig up your dahlias and you're in a colder zone, but know that it's not always reliable. Again, it depends on the winter you have, how much moisture you get. There's a lot of variables, but if you really don't wanna dig them up, it's worth trying overwintering. Again, a nice, healthy, thick layer of mulch like straw or leaves, and then a tarp over the top to keep the moisture out. That's how you're gonna to try to overwinter. The more mulch, the better. Now we will still dig them up probably every three years, even if overwintering works because we'll want to divide them and check for diseases. So if you're not sure if your stock is disease free, you may not want to overwinter because fall can be a good time to dig them up and see if you have any diseases like crown gall or leafy gall that have infected your dahlias that you'll want to discard so you don't spread it to the rest of your soil or your other dahlias. Now I said we weren't going to talk about dividing and storage in this video and we're not really, but we are going to briefly touch on it. We went over the anatomy of the dahlia in the first part of the class. We talked about the eye, the neck, and the tuber. So when we're dividing, we want to make sure that every division we make has a neck, an eye, and a tuber. Now the problem with doing this in the fall is that it's really hard to see where those eyes are. This is why personally, myself, I prefer to divide my tubers in the spring before I plant them. Because as they've started to warm up, I've been increasing the temperature of their storage area. I'm starting to see the eyes much more visibly. It's much easier to divide when I can actually see each of those eyes and I know each division is going to have an eye. There are people who are better at dividing dahlias than I am and they can see an eye before it's even come out, but often I'll think there's an eye and there's not an eye there. If you just divide a clump in two, it's highly likely that each of those clumps is going to have an eye on it. So just start with dividing in half as you feel more confident with dahlias and being able to identify the eyes and the necks and the tubers, then you might wanna start dividing more. You also might just wanna say, this isn't worth it. I'm gonna compost my tubers and I'm gonna get new ones in the spring. That's totally fine too. Now, after we dig them up in the fall and it's time to store them, a lot of people wonder, where should I store them? An unheated garage is going to be best so long as it doesn't drop below freezing. So if you have an insulated garage that's maybe attached to your house, that stays around 45, that's gonna be ideal for them. 
40 to 45, anything below that is gonna get too cold and anything above that is gonna get too warm and they might start to wake up and rot. So what we wanna do is kind of keep them in this state of dormancy. In my zone, we have to store them for a very long time. So some of them will dry out, some of them will rot before it's time to plant them. It's totally fine, don't let it get to you. Don't let it make you feel like you're a bad dahlia grower if your tubers don't store, okay? It happens to everyone. We have found that they like to be stored in a somewhat humid climate. So this can be problematic, especially in my zone. We usually have 20% humidity over the winter. They really prefer to be closer to 80% humidity. So for us, we worry about drying out usually more than rotting. I keep them actually in a stored big Rubbermaid container in between layers of, of pine shavings not touching each other, okay? So this is important when you're storing dahlias, whatever you're storing them in, pine shavings, uh, potting soil, dry potting soil can work really well. Vermiculite, some people use peat, but you know how I feel about that. Make sure that they're not touching. Whatever medium you're using, make sure that they're not touching each other because if one rots and it's touching another one, the other one is going to rot. How much air circulation you want in your container, again, is going to depend on your zone and your humidity. So if you're in a very high humidity area, you're going to want more air circulation in your containers than I will in my zone where we're very dry. I actually put mine in a Rubbermaid container with a tight lid on it in layers of pine shavings because I don't want a lot of air circulation because it's dry. But if you're in a humid area, if you put them in a fully sealed in Tupperware container like I do, they could rot. So it's going to take some experimentation. If you're just getting started with Dahlia storage, what I would do is take a few different methods from people who are in a similar zone and growing environment as you and try a few different methods. That way you'll know what's going to work the best for you. Some people wrap each tuber individually in saran wrap. For some people that works quite well, it's just a lot of plastic for me. Some people store them in cardboard containers. Uh, we've stored them in compostable leaf bags full of vermiculite. We've stored them in many different ways. Find what works for you. Don't let anyone tell you that it's the right or wrong way to do it. Try a bunch of different storage methods and see what works. And know that some dahlias just don't like to store. Some of them store better than others. It's nothing about you. It doesn't make you a bad gardener. Okay, so I am cold. My tea is almost gone. So I'm going to end this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you soon here at the farm.